We will now move uh, to uh, uh, Theodora Scarato. So I think, again, I wish that the public were more aware that we are currently studying an agent that is widespread over the world's population. I'd like to point to a couple comments in the NTP report. The technical report refers to FCC human exposure limits as safety guidelines, but this is inaccurate as the FCC has adopted maximum permissible levels, not safety limits, because proper safety testing was not ever done on chronic low-level exposure, which is why this very study is being reviewed today. The NTP found adverse health effects, namely cancer at levels the U.S. government assumes would co cause no harm based on how they set these exposure limits. And the finding of increased cancers and precancerous lesions, um, I think many scientists are stating, confirms that the basis for our FCC limits are non-protective. I wanted to point out that I think it would be important for the technical report to include the regulatory limits of other countries and briefly summarize that the United States allowable FCC limits are far higher than many other countries' limits. Another thing that is important to add to the technical report is the issue of uh, co-exposures. When we're prescribed medication, the doctor checks for synergies, and you get a side effect sheet that's a mile long, but with electromagnetic fields, with no such safety testing done, no, nor monitoring for side effects, we don't have that. And there is substantial uh, evidence of potentiation of effects. So for example, I think that the technical report, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with this, needs to review studies um, that have showed synergies and co-exposures. So this slide, I have two studies, Byun 2013, which found increased ADHD symptoms associated with mobile phone use for children with higher lead levels. And the researchers hypothesized this was due to the combined toxic effect of RF and lead on the developing brain. There was another study analyzing over 1,000 mother-child pairs, which also found a significantly increased risk of having poor or delayed neurodevelopment up to three years old in association with maternal mobile phone use during pregnancy. There's actually a rich literature on synergies that needs to be summarized in the technical report, and certainly the research showing a tumor promotion effect, both in human and animals, and I don't have time to review all of that. Um, but I'll give you the references. Um, I'm not going to go over all of this, but there are a few additional studies that um, show permeability in the blood-brain barrier that need to be added to the report. Um, these images are from a study, one of several published studies by a research team in Turkey that found rats exposed to cell phone radiation had decreased brain cells. And in this study, pregnant rats were exposed to 900 megahertz for 60 minutes a day for full gestation and then sacrificed at four weeks old and found decreased hippocampal cells. Other studies have found prenatal and postnatal exposure leading to uh, pyramidal cell loss in the hippocampus, decreases in the Purkinje, I say that wrong, cell numbers in the cerebellum. And this research also needs to be added to the report. We know there is no safe level of lead because it damages the brain. And whether in, in alone or in combination with other exposures as a tumor promoter, the fact that numerous uh, research studies have found damage in the brain, um, I believe, is critically important for the, to trigger government action. There's also research such as mice exposed prenatally to cell phones in a Yale study, which found increased hyperactivity, poor memory, and altered brain development. Um, additional published studies have found prenatal exposure linked to behavior problems and speech problems that need to be summarized in the technical report. I also think that it needs to include the worldwide action um, at kind of local levels on reducing RF exposure to the public. We have one of the most comprehensive databases, Environmental Health Trust, on these policies, which includes, I'm not going to go over it, but all of it, but decreasing Wi-Fi in schools, banning cell phone, the sale of cell phones for children. Um, and most recently, French Polynesia actually initiated a major public information campaign, both on ELF and on um, RF exposures. In Maryland, the... 19-member um, advisory council on children and environmental health and protection recommends limiting exposures as much as feasibly practical in schools and directs the Maryland State Department of Education to consider using wired devices in classrooms. Most recently, the California Department of Health issued guidelines to reduce how to reduce radio frequency radiation, but what I think is most important is what the California Department of Health actually deleted over 10 years of rewrites, almost 10 years. They deleted recommendations on cordless phones because, of course, the cordless phone base emits 
radio frequency nonstop. And also, it's important that these original recommendations were for California state employees. The first draft was information for state employees to reduce exposure and recommended the Department of General Services action to reduce, um, to, to purchase uh, reduced devices that have reduced exposures. Um, currently, 10 years old is the average age for a child to get a cell phone, as if it was some rite of passage. Yet a decade ago, California was clear, do not allow children to use a cell phone except for emergencies. That was um, deleted, that very clear advice. And I think that occupational exposure, not just for cell tower workers, electrical workers on rooftops, which is critically important and represents an egregious lack of protection, but also for delivery drivers, restaurant, retail workers, state employees, and I would add that the way Wi-Fi is rolled out into school, students are in the same category. I also noticed that the DNA damage analysis is missing from the NTP technical report as was presented in September 2016. This is the poster from the um, September meeting which states that um, the results uh, suggest that exposure to RFR has the potential to induce measurable DNA damage under certain exposure conditions. However, the 2018 draft has omitted such a characteris characterization and I'm I think that needs to be added. I also noted that the information on the IR conclusions, um, that it supports the WHO IR conclusions, that sentence has disappeared in the 2018 report, and reference needs to be added back on. So we have increased schwannoma in the two of the largest studies ever done with radiofrequency radiation. And yes, the Ramazzini study is a different exposure. However, um, they are concordant with the same agent. And then to have increased risk in humans of the same, the same type of histopath, um, case control studies with people have found people who hold cell phones to their head in the long term are at increased risk of acoustic neuroma. I also, and didn't have time to go over these, but there's increased, increased schwannomas were also found in another Ramazzini study that combined ELF, um, non-ionizing radiation, with gamma radiation. And when it comes to the mice, we have um, the NTP mice with increased lymphoma in parallel with the Lurchell study, which needs to be included in the technical report, which found increased lung and liver cancers as well as increased lymphoma at levels far, far lower than the NTP. Um, a woman contacted me recently who had a stage 3 pleomorphic sarcoma tumor on her right thigh, directly underneath where she favored uh, placing the iPad for work. We have, um, and I can't work this, because I, uh, we have uh, young women who have case reports of women with breast cancer directly underneath where the phone was stored in their bra. Um, is this by chance? So in plain terms, we have more than one study of finding rats getting schwannomas and mice getting lymphomas. Um, and I think that the concordance of these observations cannot be ignored. Considering we're living in a world of multiple exposures, even if uh, radio frequency were just a tumor promoter, with billions of cell phone users, um, I think the U.S. government needs to urgently act uh, to limit public exposures. And I, the public, again, is completely unaware that we have a product which has been untested for long-term safety. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions from the panel?